Okay, well what we've got here are the Surface Pro X and the Surface Go 2 M3, so that's the core M3, both 8GB of RAM, both 128GB storage. They've both just been reset, uh, restarted, so they're all clear of subsystems and things like that. Uh, and I'm just going to show you performance comparison between the two on a couple of things. We're going to do Blender, we're going to do Photoshop, and we're going to do an Android app through the Android uh, Windows subsystem for Android. So we'll start with Blender then, which is by far the hardest, uh, heaviest software we'll look at. On the Pro X, it's running through X64 emulation. On the Go 2, it's running natively, and you can see I did click that one first. Uh, there isn't actually a whole lot of difference in startup time there. This is 3.0, this is the beta of Blender. I'm going to get rid of the cube and I'm going to add something just ever so slightly uh, more complex and we'll zoom in with the camera there. And we can go to a shaded view. Takes a little longer to initialize over here, and you can see we've got some artifacts there. But if we enable the scene lights, interestingly, I haven't seen those artifacts until this uh, moment right now, so we'll just roll with them. Uh, and we can also go to shaded view, uh, and we can set that to use cycles. So now both images look the same, which is good. And if we make sure our render settings are the same, and I'm going to turn off denoise for now. So we're going to go to 128, uh, we'll go to 64 samples rather than 4096, just so this doesn't take forever. Uh, everything else looks the same, and then render. And so we're working through here, both images are the same, which is great. Um, they're both taking about as long as each other. Pro X might have just taken the lead, given I started it a moment after. So we can see how long this has taken. We're up to 57, 61, 64. So it took 24.28 seconds here and 24.35 seconds here. So basically identical. Now where that tends to go downhill, as I'll try and show you now, is if we enable denoising and we use the open image denoiser. Now this is potentially problematic because that's optimized for Intel. <coughs> I should have lowered the samples there, I'm sorry. So our samples are, are very similar at this stage. About halfway through now at 33, 37, there's 50 samples, and then we get to 61, and then we're going to get a pause while it denoises. And over here we're on 61, and we've also got that pause. Hmm. And it's not particularly efficient on either of these. These are both low-end devices, but you can see the go-to is finished in 39 seconds 98, and our Pro X is kind of stuck here. It's not getting through there, so this is a problem. I mean, you don't want to be rendering on either of these devices anyway. I'm going to cancel this render, because what I do want to show you is that the viewport works fine. Yeah, it's pretty crappy with uh, cycles, but it's good enough. And the Pro X can handle large scenes. And if we go into the EV view, you'll see those artifacts have gone now. That's working absolutely fine. It's smooth. It's just as smooth as this. Nearly. So you're not going to want to render on either of these devices, but they're both perfectly capable of handling large scenes, making edits when you're out and about traveling, and so on. So let's quit out of Blender, and the next thing we'll take a look at is Photoshop. So Photoshop now runs native on the Pro X. So we've got an ARM-based Photoshop on the left, and we've got our X64 Photoshop on the right. 
Photoshop takes a while to start up whatever kind of computer you've got. And as I said, these computers were rebooted, so it's not, not in the memory or anything. It's about the same on each. Taking a little bit longer now on the go to. So let's create a new file. We'll have a print A4 landscape at 300 dpi and I'll create the same thing on the Pro X A4 landscape 300 dpi. So there's our image and you can see the pen is really nice. I think Windows 11 really has reduced the amount of jitter that we see in the pens. Pull this down here. It's running perfectly smooth on the Pro X. It's running great on the Go 2 as well. Uh, if we go to the Mixer Brush tool, pick a different color there. You can see that works pretty well on the Pro X. It does slow down after a little while, after more than a few brush strokes. And if we do the same thing on the Go 2, ah, we need to actually load the brush I think. And pull this down. There we go. We're using slightly different brushes here, this isn't a great comparison. But you can see they're both working pretty well. And then next I'm going to open up a raw file. I'm actually going to open it in Photoshop, there we go. And so that's going to load camera raw. So there it is on the Go 2, there it is on the Pro X. And you can actually see quite a big difference here. So the go-to, we can absolutely change these values in real time. It all works really quite nicely. This is 6,000 by 400 or, or 24 megapixels. The Pro X is much slower. And that's a shame because this is meant to be a native app. It's running on ARM. It's not running through emulation and it is just, just slower. You can do it, you can do what you need to do, but it's not great. It's, uh, the go-to is actually a little bit more performant here. Okay, so next up, we're gonna fire up the Android, uh, Windows subsystem for Android, and I'm just gonna load the Kindle app. <coughs> so we have to start the subsystem for Android, that takes a little while, and then it fires up the app. This is only available in the beta version of Windows 11 at the moment. This is going to come uh, later, probably next year now, into the full Windows release. At the moment, it's very limited what apps you can load, even side loading. Um, plenty of apps load. I've had a couple of issues with some apps, not others. So they took about the same amount of time to load. We've got Darwin's Origin of Species here. Now that's actually pretty janky when you're scrolling left and right. It's not super smooth. It's much, much smoother on the Pro X. And I think that's because this is running natively on ARM. It's not being emulated, whereas it's, it's being emulated for an X64 processor here. Uh, I could be wrong about that but it is much smoother on the Pro X, even if we go full screen there. So that's pretty neat. I just want to end with firing up Word on both of them, which is really what you're going to be using a travel device like this for, writing documents, tweaking the odd picture, so on. The Pro X just 
just feels faster and more responsive. So this is the native ARM version. You have to uninstall the emulated version that comes with the Pro X, and then you download from the Office website the specific ARM version. And it is just a bit quicker. And you can see here, I've got Zotero installed, so it's still taking those, those extensions and add-ins. And of course, our pen still works. And it's the same thing if we fire up PowerPoint. Power Toys is <laughs> taking preference there when I type POW. They're both great, they're both super fast. Now, honestly, this is probably biased, but the Pro X just feels a bit more responsive when I'm using Windows. Uh, I say that in the full recognition that everything I've just showed you, the Go 2 is probably on par, if not better in some things. Um, so it's quite interesting there that even when Camera Raw and Photoshop are native ARM, they're still not quite as performant as the Go 2. I've actually punted now to stick with the Pro X because I think the larger screen is better for multitasking, it's better for writing documents, it's better for editing images. I really like the Go 2 for reading uh, PDFs and papers on, uh, but the screen is nicer on the Pro X and it just feels better, it's a, it's a thinner device, it's more rounded, uh, yeah. So there's the performance between the two, there's not a lot in it, the Go 2 comes out on some things, the Pro X comes out on some things, hope that was helpful. I just want to mention something that uh, only occurred to me as I picked these things up and finished recording the last section. And that is that the Go 2 has got really warm on the back, really warm on the front. The Pro X is just not at all, it's just room temperature. And the battery has also gone down significantly more on the Go 2 than it has on the Pro X. You can see even those flyouts are just behaving better on the Pro X there. Uh, the Go 2 is going to throttle much quicker, the Go 2 is going to run out of battery much quicker. So the fact the Pro X is, is handling Blender and handling Photoshop to about the same level, while staying cool, is I think a big deal. 